Hello. Good afternoon, my friend. Hey, Farin. How are you? Hi. Um, I hope you are staying safe and healthy in the comfort of your home. Uh, welcome to another art, art conversation. Thank you very uh, much. And um, I'm pleased to introduce today artist Zara Jalayer. She's an artist as well as a physician pathologist. She's a doctor who creates. How interesting, right? Um, Zara, we are so excited to have you today in our conversation and to hear about your work. How are you doing? How are you? Hi, Farin. Thank you very much uh, for having me. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm doing great. I'm really doing great today. And the weather is good. You know, everything is fine, <laughs> finally. Fine. Uh, Zara, please tell us a little bit about yourself and how come you are a doctor and how you became interested in art? Uh, well, um, I'm a pathologist by training and I'm an artist uh, at heart. Mm -hmm. Actually, growing up uh, in the artistic um, environment, my dad was a self taught artist. Growing up, just watching him doing painting, I fell in love uh, with the painting when I was a kid. But I pursue medicine and I went to medical school. And after coming to United States, I finished my residency. I did pathology training. And then finally, I come back to my passion uh, again. So your parents also, I mean, your father also is an artist, right? Right, yeah. OK, and um, what, what type of a style he painting? He was doing a historical uh, painting from Persepolis. Uh, he was doing uh, oil painting on black velvet. And uh, his uh, work is really amazing. And it is historical, mostly. Yes. And it, um, why your style change? You know, I mean, when I saw your name, actually, in our list, uh, I was expecting some traditional Persian art, like, you know, pattern, I don't know, miniature painting, you know. Then I saw your website and I noticed your work are quite different with what I was imagining about your work, you know. And then how you became interested in this type of art? Right, you're right. I was uh, doing classic painting when I was back home and I, I sent a um, picture from 1996 uh, for you. But here in New York, after I uh, finished the residency, because I was working with microscope. Yeah, this painting is from 1996 when I was in medical school. Yeah. And then uh, when, uh, when I started uh, working on the microscope, looking at the human tissue in a cellular level, uh, looking at under the microscope, it, it was like abstract art. You see cells, uh, there are cell forming, in the high power view of the microscope and when you are on low power of the microscope it's more look like a looking at marble layers of marble and after i started to go back to art after graduation from pathology residency i get more toward abstract art and the whole working with the microscope changed my style completely and being in new york and just exposed with modern art and Western culture, I think it has influence on my work. Uh, yeah, I can see that, you know, looking at your work and knowing that you are a pathologist, the first thing actually came to my mind uh, before reading your statement and before knowing like, you know, why you're doing this type of art was human self. And then um, even I was talking to a friend of mine and she saw your website. She emailed me, she said, you know, the art, her artwork look like, you know, human cell. I said, yes, actually, that's how he, she got inspired. So is there any other inspiration besides like, you know, um, like, you know, your profession? Is there any other inspiration um, for your work? Yeah, uh, I, I love nature. Uh, I 
really enjoy walking in the nature. It's have relaxing effect on me. When I'm going to nature, uh, I try to capture the beauty that I see. Uh, for example, if I'm looking at the details of a stone, a colorful stone, a color of a flower, or looking at the beach, ocean, any scenes, I try to capture those beauties and try to transfer it to my viewers uh, with different language, color language. I use color language to communicate with people around me. And I think the origin of uh, all beauties are in the nature. Uh, the beauty, yeah. So um, these are your inspiration. These are mostly your um, subject, the subject of your work, right? Nature and um, uh, your work, your profession and um, human self, right? Right. And um, yeah, so um, it's, I mean, you said your work also changed from being like, you know, from that type of art we saw, like, you know, one of example to abstract art. Is there any, um, anyone you're following, any inspiration, any person like, you know, inspired you uh, in abstract art besides, you know, you seeing that under microscope and um, et cetera? Uh, Halton Rohr was uh, one of the artists that I really admire his work, especially his art performances. He he's really a great artist, and he he had some influence on my work, and I try to do performing art as well. Uh, I doing a performance about um, six hours in Shashama Gala. I perform in 2017 and 2018. Uh, our, unfortunately, this year got canceled due, due to COVID-19, but hopefully next year I'm gonna perform uh, as a art performance, live painting, abstract painting again. Yeah, I hope so. You know, we're all hoping like, you know, thing goes back to normal. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. so uh, when you're creating, you know, this is kind of new for me too, and I'm sure many other uh, friends of us, which they're watching today and they're hearing, they want to know. Um, it's that like, you know, when you're creating an artwork, you start the work as it comes to your mind, or you have a concept ahead of time. Did you sketch something? you know what you're going to do, then start, or you're just starting pouring the art and then um, creating something? At the beginning, uh, when I uh, have uh, started this uh, kind of work, I, I lost my dad. And when I was in the grief, uh, I tried to just use bold colors, intense colors. And when I start pouring, I try to get my energy from those paints and colors. And it was like charging my batteries, yeah. uplifting my mood. It, it, for example, I have a painting called Exotic Marble. It's just uh, blue and red. And it was giving me a lot of energy. But after I, I passed that period of grief, uh, I'm going more to our natural. For example, when I try to do marble, I use natural colors. Uh, not the exotic one. The it's, so they, it's like, you know, depend on your mood, right? You know, exactly. uh, how you feeling. So you don't, you don't like, you know, um, plan ahead of time, right? You don't like, you know, have ahead of time. Okay, I'm going to do, I'm going to use this type of color today. I'm going to create, I don't know, uh, I don't know, a stone or something, an image of a stone. Uh, you just do what it comes to your mind or how you feel. Not, not recently. For my solo exhibitions, I plan a couple of months ahead. Okay. I, I prepare in my mind uh, uh, what I'm going to do, what's the subject of my exhibition, and I try to have a selection and pre um, prepared mind. Okay. Um, but always you have surprises uh, in poor art. You can, you can get what you have a uh, plan in your mind exactly. You have always surprises. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's quite difficult to control it, right? You know, when you're exactly. going in for it, or it's very difficult to control it. So uh, since like, you know, um, for myself at least, um, I, I would like to know, and then I don't know much about this fluid art. I would like to know the process, like, you know, would you explain, um, like, you know, 
the process of this creating um, and uh, making this like, you know, fluid and pouring out. Uh, I use acrylic paint uh, for my painting and I use uh, mostly fluid uh, acrylic. I mix it with water or uh, some pouring medium, uh, in different pouring medium I use. And, uh, uh, and I start uh, to making, for example, if I have a smaller piece, it doesn't need a lot of time for pre preparing the paint. But if, for example, if I'm doing a 48 uh, inch, for example, like this painting that I have here, I have, I should sit a couple of hours for preparing the paint that I want. Uh, for example, the, the scale that I want, how much dark color, how much white color, how many shades I want to use, and the proportion of the shades. Uh, and Unfortunately, it's not relaxing on the larger piece, like the smaller piece. Yeah, in a smaller piece, you can have just fun and use, uh, just be happy doing that. But in larger piece, no, you, you just should be focused and keep track of which paint you, uh, you are using right now, which come in the next. Uh, you, you can control it uh, when, when you pour it on the surface. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, um, okay, I mean, I have a short video actually um, of your work I'm going to play uh, just, just to see like, you know, um, it's like, you know, it's just um, little of the process of like, you know, the work you're doing. I have it here, um, which everyone can see. Uh, the science uh, behind uh, this fluid art, I call it fluid art, is that um, it's all related to fluid dynamic. Uh, it depends on the density of paints. Some are lower density, some are high density. High density paints going down, low, low density paint coming up. And it's... Uh, really complicated to predict how it's it gonna look at the end but a good visual artist can develop an understanding of uh, by trial and error he can predict what uh, what he gonna get which palette uh, she or he is using and um, what results uh, she or he gonna get um, yes, that's true. So uh, since, as I said, this is kind of um, artwork for me, which is like, you know, I never tried. I personally don't know how much, um, how, what's the process and everything. Um, after you finish the work, okay, I guess it takes some time to dry, right? And then what's the next step? First of all, how long it takes to dry? And second, what you do after it dry? Are you seal it with something? Are you varnish it with something? I mean, this is a question also I was, a um, friend of mine was checking your website. Um, she also sent me this question and she said, how she get this glossy, shiny surface on, on some of her paintings? Right. Uh, it take, uh, it depends on the size, uh, how long it get uh, dry. When uh, I'm doing paint in 20 minutes, the, the paint start to dry and I should be fast as much as I can. But uh, it takes about larger pieces, even get three, four days to dry out. And for finishing that, I mostly use uh, resin and for just uh, seal that and seal the painting. And the shiny look is uh, due to resin. Okay, okay, okay. I was, um, I'm in love with resin painting. I was yeah. recently actually uh, checking um, an artist. She's from, uh, she's Italian artist. I can't really pronounce her name. It said something like Angelique and uh, Ana Analysia, I can't pronounce it, Moreto. And mm. she's, her work is insane. I mean, some artists in my idea are God, you know, God or goddesses. They, you know, the type of art they creating it's something exactly like God doing, you know? I mean, so for me, like, you know, this lady, this Italian lady who's doing this type of art with resin and all other uh, materials she uses are insane. And they are like, you know, she's a goddess to me in that media. And I really, really want to try. So this is like, you know, my summer project to learn how to do this type of art. 
Um, anyway, um, so um, what is people reaction or responses to your work? It's really amazing. Uh, people really has really emotional, very severe emotional responses to the work. As I observe it in myself at the beginning, when I have low mood, low energy, I start to work with some bold, intense colors, my mood lift up. I, I was seeing in myself that I have really strong emotional responses. And then I start doing this, observe it in the viewers. I try, I become uh, curious and search for the answer in neuroscience. And actually I found the answer in Dr. Eric Kendall's uh, book. Uh, he is a professor of neuroscience. He is a Nobel uh, prize winner in this field. Uh, he explained that the color by itself has an extraordinary ability for provoke emotional responses in human brain. It doesn't matter if you use color with the lines, with the forms, or you just use colors. It has a really extraordinary ability. And I really watch that in people, especially when I'm doing live uh, performing art, uh, I can see that emotion in the people's eye and their face. And the reaction, right? Because of color and uh, yeah. like, you know, the fluid art actually, it's kind of probably, I mean, at least for myself, you know, it makes me smile. You yeah, know, exactly. your mood also change kind yeah. of, I think. That's really true. Yes, yeah. Um, um, so what do you think, what, what you're doing these days, you know, I mean, um, in uh, social distancing, distancing and this pandemic, and what do you think um, an uh, artist can do um, in this situation? And what you yourself doing in this situation? It's really difficult time for everybody in the whole universe, but let's look at half full glass. Uh, there is really, there is a lot of time to concentrate, to be alone with ourselves and artists can really take advantage of this uh, confinement period to go deep in, into themselves. I tried to do that myself. I started 30 day uh, painting in 30 day, um, in 30 day uh, series. Yeah, this is uh, one of my painting. I started to do 30 painting, just a smaller piece, 80 by 10 um, rectangular canvas. And I try to put every day painting next to uh, the day before and see the changes and see what pleased me more in the, this painting and what I don't like in this one. And the day after I try to uh, extend what I like and omit what I don't like in the painting. Mm -hmm. And I really got a good result and I got uh, good responses from my followers as well. It was really pleasing. So this is, for example, is one of those you, you don't like, <laughs> like, you know, it's like the no. color and mixture. <laughs> these and, are, and these are probably because you can't go to beach and you don't have access to <laughs> some like, you know, recreation and public beaches. So you create this like, you know, beach uh, sense in your artwork, right? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I live in a place that I have access to the beach. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I think that influenced my work. <laughs> but, but the beaches are closed, right? I mean, especially yeah. in New York City. I know you're living in Westchester somewhere, and then so yeah. the beaches and like, you know, all around the New York, at least, um, the beaches are still are closed. So we don't have access, at least we can create and look, right? <laughs> I, I, can't I had the blessing being next to the water. I can't. Oh, all right. Just, Oh, that's a good opportunity. At least you can yeah. look it from the window or from your backyard. <laughs> yeah. Um, so is there um, any particular message in your work? You know, I mean, uh, I was looking at um, some of your artwork earlier. Let me actually uh, play it here. Um, 
Um, I know each work has some, um, you said, you know, based on your mood, based on your feeling, you know, I mean, most abstract artists actually, uh, they do the same thing. Um, but there are some particular artwork, which I, when I uh, scan through your artwork, I find them interesting. And I said, probably these are has, they had some, um, like, you know, um, the reason for behind that and there are some message and there are some symbols in that or you know or your work has some particular message or like you're following a goals uh, for your work yeah the, as for, for, for example I uh, like this one the one we just seen in right. Um, screen right uh, as a pathologist and artist like scientists and artists I had uh, this advantage to work in both field. Uh, this uh, painting uh, per se is uh, from uh, one international exhibition uh, with uh, I, uh, the origin of this painting is this picture in the right side. It's uh, a neurosphere picture uh, under the microscope uh, by a group of uh, neuroscientists in Mount Sinai. And this uh, painting, uh, this picture was in Art of the Brain exhibition in 2018 edition of Mount Sinai exhibition. And it was a uh, inspiration for me to do this painting, which is one of the technique that I developed myself with fluid art, but it's not just using gravity. It's, uh, it's not with the gravity. And, uh, and it's get into the international exhibition uh, in England and New York here uh, in Cambridge Institute of uh, Stem Cell. And here in New York, uh, uh, I forgot, uh, the, the New York Hall of Science. Uh, it's a group of science, scientists, artists around the world. Uh, they make a sci art group and they are both working in both places uh, as it's my message to bridge art with the science somehow so you're that creating, yeah, you're creating a relationship between um science and art yes exactly is this the same technique as you know your other work or like the same material and the same technique or uh, we use different same, same material but different technique uh, in the uh, other work i use gravity uh, then they are flat surface, but this one I didn't use a uh, flat uh, surface. Okay. Uh, I, uh, it's mostly not gravity. All right. Um, so how about this one? This is like, you know, peace and we see the symbols of peace in the center, you know, which is, uh, are you uh, creating, you created this for a particular exhibition or shows or like it's just something for yourself? Uh, no, it was uh, the chaos of, you know, in the world. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, the same technique as the previous one, and but uh, fluid uh, acrylic again. And it was uh, prepared for a project uh, here in New Rochelle. Uh, we had some violence in the high school, unfortunately. And we have an art movement during the park. Uh, the fall, it's like a festival. Uh, for weekend long, we have music, we have uh, um, open studios, everything you can find around the corner in, in a week. In, uh, it's really art-oriented city near Russia. And this piece uh, purposefully made for uh, this peace project in the high school to just raise the awareness of that unhappy, accident that we had in the New Rochelle High School. Yeah, so we all need a piece of like, you know, I mean, we all need peace, you know, in this world, <laughs> this yeah. world of like, you know, chaos. This is really a peaceful uh, message to send peace. Yeah. We, um, so as um, I always asking this question, is there any memorable responses to your work you can remember, like, you know, um, during like you know all like you know all these years you're working as an artist yeah uh, i always remember the first uh, painting that i sold 
you know, I think uh, it's memorable stuff usually yes. in the history of every artist, right? Yes, yes, that's that's true, right? I'm sure everyone agree. You know, the first art you sell, you remember, like you know, forever. I was um, um, happy memory. <laughs> yeah. I was performing live uh, painting at the Uri in 2017 and uh, everybody come and take a look, uh, ask a question and uh, a lady come with two beautiful daughter and they, they started to show their emotion. Wow, it's so beautiful. And all of them said that, oh, it's really fit for that and the other girl say the same thing and the mother said oh yeah let's get it uh, for your dad and it it just happened for a really good price uh, first uh, painting that i was doing live in my first show it was really good experience and a good beginning for me yes i'm sure i'm sure it's really good experience and she was a crbe a real estate Chief, uh, CEO, and um, uh, the chief of real estate in Manhattan. That's why we remember it. <laughs> so, um, is there any particular dream projects you like to do now or in future? Yeah, of course. Uh, as I said, um, my goal is bridging between art and science. I'm thinking having a project just. Uh, uh, the whole thing be in the both sides, uh, just some subjects in the science, especially in neuroscience. And uh, by the beauty of art, I try to uh, transfer the message that I have. I'm working on it mentally, but um, it takes time. Um, yes, I'm sure it takes time, right? I mean, it's art, creating art, creating meaningful and beautiful art always yeah. take, uh, takes a long time. My work in particular, I miss, um, like, you know, not beautiful as yours. It takes years sometimes, year or two years to finish, you know, so it's crazy. Everyone has their own style and, you know, um, and they all concepts for making art. Um, all right. Uh, really beautiful. I enjoy your art, really. And I should get your book. Yeah, mine, mine are very traditional, you know, because yeah. I used to design carpets you know, since I was 13 years old. So it's mostly, you see those carpet pattern and carpet design in my work still. So <laughs> it's just, I can't, it just start like, you know, something different and it still end up, you know, to those pattern I used to do from childhood. So that's, that's why it takes a long time. Um, all right, do you have any final word for our today guest and um, our today art lover? Um, uh, just, um, I, I can uh, finish by a sentence by uh, Rumi uh, and say, uh, he said, your task isn't to seek for love, but merely to seek and find all the barriers within yourself that you have built against it. Um, we, all artists uh, know how love is really the central of our being, our works, our communication. And let's, uh, in this time, we can go deeper and uh, try to uh, clean this barrier that we made. Yes, that's true. That's true, Zara. I agree with you 100%. Um, okay, so um, this is the end of this week Art Conversation with Zara. Zara, we are so pleased to be with you today. We really enjoy and we learn a lot from your artwork and from your life as artist and as doctor stories. So if you have um, any question, any suggestion, any comment for Zara, or you want to reach out to Zara, this is her website, as you see here in the screen. ZaraJalayer.com. She has amazing artwork in her website and you can reach out. And as usual, if you have any question for me and for Nova, you can email us at office at the And don't forget to add in subject line, art conversation with Karim. Um, enjoy your weekend as 
it's funny to say weekend, right? We have three months weekend. So it's like really, <laughs> we are in weekend all the time. But enjoy your Memorial Day weekend and stay safe and strong. Love you all. Bye. See you next week, next Friday. Thank you very much. Thank you.